You're listening to Five Before, a faith community podcast. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any new episodes. For more information, check us out at faithcommunitylc.com or look for our app on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Hello, Facebook and YouTube and all the other ways that you are listening or watching our Five Before podcast. We want to tell you uh, good morning and Happy Monday. Hope you guys are starting your week out strong, and we're so glad to be coming back to you today uh, for the Five Before podcast. Um, Aaron is off today, so we are doing Mobile Monday, uh, and Aaron will get everything posted to where it needs to be. Uh, but uh, we're so glad to be coming back live with you again today to bring you a little bit of encouragement. Um, Again, don't forget, click that share button or tell somebody about what's going on uh, with this podcast. And if you have a prayer request or if you have any kind of a praise report, we would love to hear that. And I uh, already got some of those from the weekend, so that's always exciting. Um, but uh, I want to share with you something really basic, uh, but something that uh, we haven't talked about on here yet. And um, I can't recall anyone talking about it uh, up to this point, but it's it's a it's a popular scripture. Like a lot of people who don't even go to church, who don't know the Bible very well, even they know this particular passage of scripture, and they have heard this. Uh, but there are some concepts that go along with this that I wanted to encourage you with on how you can be used and how to make this applicable to your life. Um, Matthew chapter 5 is the Sermon on the Mount, and at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, we have a lot of these really iconic scriptures, a lot of these iconic sayings and quotes, things that we get songs from. Uh, even as kids, we know some of these scriptures just from the songs we learned as kids. Um, but there's this one passage in verse 13 that's super popular, and it says this. It says, you are the salt of the earth. I want you to notice it's something. It doesn't say you will be salt of the earth. It says you are salt of the earth. The problem is, he goes on to say, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. So Jesus here in the Sermon on the Mount is talking uh, to this group of people, and he tells them not, hey, you will be, you can be. He says, you are salt. I want to tell you something today, guys. As you go through your everyday life, you are salt. You are the salt of the earth. You're not waiting to become it. Um, you're not hoping to become it. You are salt. The question is not, are you salt? It's how effective are you at being salty? How salty are you? And I know some of you are going, I'm a pretty salty person. But um, I'm talking about, you know, for the purpose that God has given you, how salty are you? There's a few purposes for salt that I thought about that I just wanted to share with you. And I wanted to remind you, this is why it's important that you be salty. Number one, salt is medicinal. In other words, salt has worked throughout history, especially in the Bible times and the times that this was written and the times Jesus would have said this to these people, um, this was something they did um, for medicine. You've heard the old saying, right? Uh, rub, rub a little salt in the wound, wound, right? Because salt actually has healing elements in it. And I want to tell you something, that as you are salt, it is your job not to bring destruction, but to bring healing. And I'm talking on every area. I'm talking about mind, body, and soul. I'm talking about the way that you speak, the way that you believe, the way that you pray, whether it be emotional, whether it be physical. I don't care how you want to apply this, this idea that you are salt, but salt is supposed to be medicinal. You should be a healing agent everywhere that you go. The second thing that I wrote down, salt is flavorable. I don't know if anybody out there is like me, but I love salt. I love salt on food. I just ate food that I'm that guy. I don't know if anybody else is that I'm going to salt the food before I even taste it. It's just a habit because I love salt. I love the flavor that it adds to it. And the worst thing that I could ever eat, I, I'm not going to tell you where it was, but recently I went out to eat with some friends of ours um, and we went and got a steak and it was expensive, and I was really excited because it was a restaurant I'd been wanting to eat at. Literally the worst steak I've ever put in my mouth. And there were three of us that ate them that night, and we all agreed, no seasoning, no flavor. 
could not enjoy it even though the cut of meat was good. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. It is our job as kingdom people, as Jesus people, to flavor the earth and make people desire it. I really believe that. I believe that it is our job to make people desire Jesus, desire the kingdom, desire God, desire relationship, desire what he has to offer. And the problem I see with so many people is is people um, just aren't bringing good flavor where they go. Uh, they're just not bringing good flavor. They're keeping it bland. The third thing that I thought about salt, and it's something I'm reminded of recently as well because I just ate a piece of cornbread with lunch, uh, salt makes you thirsty. Um, salt makes you thirsty. I don't know if you've ever heard had anything that's uh, that was very salty, but it makes you thirsty. And just like I just said on the last point, it's our job as kingdom people, as Jesus people, to make people thirsty. They should long for, they should crave, they should desire what we as Jesus people have. It's unfortunate that more people crave what the world has that are Jesus people than the world crave what Jesus people has. That should be the opposite. We should be living lives that make people thirsty for God. Um, and then the last thing that I wrote down um, is that salt is a preservative. Uh, what they would do in the days of Jesus is they would take these giant uh, bags of, I mean, pieces of meat, and they would rub them down with salt to preserve them to make sure that they kept. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, as I think about my life, you know, I ask myself, am I doing my job helping preserve people, helping people make it, helping people persevere, helping people get through whatever it is that they're facing? You should be somebody that is helping people make it. You should be preserving their life, preserving them with the words of encouragement that you give them, preserve them with the prayers that you pray over them. Um, that's what you should be doing. So um, that's just a few things that I read today that I wanted to share with you about Jesus telling us that we have been called to be salt and uh, tried to make it super applicable to your life today. So which one of these things are you struggling with and which one do you need to work harder on right now? Um, is it you being a healing agent? Is it you bringing flavor? Is it you making people thirsty? Is it you preserving people? What is it that you can do better to be salt? Because again, you're not going to be salt. You are salt. The question is, how salty are you? So let me pray for you that God would make you salty today and that God would use you in incredible ways. So Father, we love you. And I thank you that, um, that you have made us to be salt. Um, it's not something we're trying to become. It's not something we're longing to become. It's not something we hope we can become. That's This is how you've created us. We are called to be salt. Uh, the question is, is, are we salty? So I just pray for everyone that's listening right now, and I pray that you would make us all salty right now, that when we go out today in our jobs, in our schools, uh, in the highways and byways of our communities, wherever we're going today, that you would help us to be healing agents, just as salt is, that you would help us to be flavorable, that you would uh, help us to, to bring flavor everywhere that we go that makes it taste well, um, and God, that we bring that enjoyment in with us. Uh, God, I pray that um, you would help us to make people thirsty, uh, that they would long for what you have, that you they would long for what you are doing in our lives. And God, I pray that you would help us go out and that we would be men and women who preserve those that we come into contact with that are struggling. God, that we are the ones that are able to help them get through uh, through the power of your Holy Spirit at work within our life. So, um, God, I just pray today for those that are listening. Make us salty in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, we love you guys so much. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Um, again, all this is on the app, the website, iHeartRadio, the iTunes store, all this stuff. Um, so check it out. Thank you guys for you, your comments. Good to see you, uh, Kay and Nancy out in Kenya. Hope everything is going great. Um, I want to say hey to John Asher. He don't know anything about that cornbread. So uh, John Asher, you need to find some good cornbread in the Pacific Northwest so that you can be reminded to make people thirsty. Uh, anyway, we love you guys. Hope you have an awesome Monday, and uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow for the 5 Before. Have an awesome day. Thank you for listening to 5 Before, a faith community podcast. For more information, check us out at faithcommunitylc.com or look for our app on iTunes and in the Google Play Store.